Christina here with Sheridan Art and Designs. Uh, today I was going to talk to you a little bit about how to read these pattern envelopes. Um, if you're a beginner, it can be really daunting uh, to decipher all the information that you get on these to make sure that you're getting all the right stuff and you know um, how to start out uh, your sewing and, and your pattern. So we're going to talk about this. Um, right before we dive in, I wanted to show you just three quick measurements to take before you get to the store so that you know what size you are on these patterns. So really quickly, let's just show you how to take your bust, your waist, and your hip measurements. Those are kind of the holy trinity of measurements. You'll always need those for different projects. So if you know them, write them on down and then you can just apply them across the board to all the patterns that you're buying and all the projects you're doing. Um, so the first one is your bust measurement. Your bust measurement you're going to measure at the widest part of your chest or bust line. Um, usually right around nipple height is where you want to be, but um, make sure that you are keeping it all very straight and even across your back and along the sides. You want to just come all the way around right at the widest part and you want to measure how wide that is, right? And then the same thing, you are going to measure all the way around on your waist. Your waist will be the narrowest part of your torso, right? So right around your belly button usually. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit higher than that, but whatever that narrowest part is, that's going to be your waistline. So same thing, just like the bust, make sure it's all the way flat, all the way around. You don't want to have the back be too high, it'll give you the wrong measurement. So make sure you're right around the narrowest part of your waist, and you're breathing normally. Don't suck it in here. You definitely want to make sure you have the correct information. Um, and then you just write that measurement down. And then last one is your hips. Your hips you're going to measure at the widest part of your hips. So it's usually below where you would uh, wear like your pants. It would be below that line. Um, and it will go right around your butt and your hips to measure out the widest part there. So same thing. Just make sure you're not um, breathing normally. You're standing straight, all of that. Um, and then write that measurement down. So once you have all three of those, you're ready to go to the store and pick out your pattern. So for the purposes of today, um, I picked two different patterns out that we're actually using and modifying for projects that we're working on, um, just to give you an idea of what the different styles of patterns will look like. Um, this is a Simplicity and this one's a Butterix. They're two major manufacturers, so um, they're two you might come across. So the first one, let's start with this coat pattern. Um, the first thing you'll see when you pull out this envelope is uh, the front here. You'll see the different styles that you can uh, make of this coat. Um, anything that you see on here, these, these styles in the front, will be inside the envelope. They'll all be included. So you can pick any one you like. And they usually have a little bit, a uh, little letter down at the bottom or sometimes next to them somewhere that tells you what style that one is. So this one's a B, this one's a C, and this one on the model is A. So for ease, we're going to work with A today, but you could pick any of the ones on the envelope and they'll be inside. So once you have your style pick, you also see up here, that's the pattern number. So if you ever need to rebuy the pattern or you want to tell someone which one you used, you can give them the pattern number. And then usually in the corner here, it'll also tell you what sizes are included in the envelope. So sometimes they divide their sizes up um, between two different envelopes. So you have to make sure you're grabbing the right one. Um, but this one has extra, extra small all the way up to extra, extra large. So um, it all fit pretty much in this one pattern. So once you have picked out your style, you're ready to go to the, the flap of the envelope here. And that is where those measurements we just took come into play. So you're gonna figure out what size you are for this pattern. Um, I would check them every time you get a new pattern because different pan pattern manufacturers will have different sizes um, just depending on what they used. Um, to measure the out there sizes. So definitely make sure you double check. Don't assume you're always a medium or always a small or always a large in something, right? Um, so this one will give you your body measurements and those same ones, those bust, waist, and hip measurements. Um, and then it'll assign it to a size. So let's say we go across here and we say, okay, those measurements we took fall right here. Um, they're pretty close in a, in a medium. That's a medium, right? Um, if you're in between sizes, Usually I would go up a size because it's always easier to take something in than it is to add more on it. And if you cut the one that's a little bit bigger, um, it's easier to kind of move that line in when you're constructing it than it is to have to add more back on. 
um, but for ease, let's just say we fit perfectly in that medium size, right? So once we have that medium, we're ready to look at the back of the envelope here. So the back of this envelope gives you a lot of information, usually in two different languages. It'll usually be English and French or sometimes Spanish. Um, so we're just gonna work with our English here. Um, and then right at the top here, it'll give you fabrics that you can use. So these are just suggestions. You can use any kind of fabric you like usually for things, um, depending on what look you're going for, but um, this is a coat. So it's suggesting you look at brocades, fleeces, wools, that kind of thing. Um, and then it also gives you suggestions for if we were doing B and we have this like fluffy collar and cuff and the extra waistband here. Um, it'll give you suggestions for that kind of fabric. So maybe you want faux fur for that um, or leather or, you know, it'll give you different suggestions um, to go off of. So if you're just starting out, you can um, definitely go by the suggestions and it'll help you um, get the garment more like what you would see on the front. So after we look at our fabrics, then we come down here to, um, to our sizes. So uh, this is the chart that tells you how much yardage you need to buy based on the size that you are. So if we're looking at, it'll give you all the different views from the front down the side here. So coat A, coat B, coat C. We decided we're gonna do coat A today, right? So coat A, and then we go across to our medium size, which is right over here. And that tells us what yardage we need to buy. So the only variable here is the width of the fabric that you choose. So let's say you go to the store, you pick out a nice brocade for this um, and it's 45 inches of wide. And it'll tell you that on the bolt of the fabric at the store. But if it's 45 inches wide, that means we need five yards of fabric. Um, if we pick out a nice wool that happens to be 60 inches wide, um, that means we only need three and a half yards of fabric. Um, so pros and cons, definitely think about it when you're picking out your fabric. Usually it comes down to luck for me. Um, I pick out the fabric I like and if it happens to be 60 inches wide, that's always awesome because it means I need to buy less of it, right? Uh, and then it'll also tell you down here, it says you need interfacing. So interfacing will help stabilize certain parts of your garment um, and they'll be able to help you pick that out at the store, but it tells you exactly what kind of interfacing you need and how much of it here. So after we have picked out the fabric we want, you can come all the way down here to the bottom and it gives you your finished garment measurements. So it shows you, it tells you how big this garment's gonna be based on your size. And those measurements aren't necessarily the same as the measurements we had up here. Um, this one will tell you um, based on you where you'll fit into this garment. And then this one is more about um, what the finished garment is like. So this coat is really baggy and oversized. So those garments, uh, finished measurements uh, will be bigger than the ones that we have up here. So for instance, uh, the bust line on this coat when it's finished at a medium will be 49 inches around. Um, so that's much larger than the medium size that they suggest with a bust line of between 36 and 38. So you'll have a lot of room um, in the coat um, if you're that 36, 38 and you make the medium. Um, with that in mind, you can decide if you want to size up or size down or if that's the look you want. Um, if you want it to be a little tighter, you can size down. If you want it to be a little bigger, you can size up. Um, and then after that, it also shows you um, what the finished length will be from the base of your neck. Um, so to measure that, to find out how long you want it to be, you want to take um, the measurement starting at the very back of your neck. If you look down, you can feel that bone right there at the back of your neck. Start measuring there because that's about where a collar will hit you or the base of a shirt will hit you right there around um, that bone. And then measure it all the way down your back um, until you get to the spot where you want it to be. Like this one lands, looks like right around her knees, right? Um, so you can take that on you and then you know, okay, if I'm making coat A, that's gonna be 39 inches long. So if your measurement that you took is higher than 39 inches or longer than 39 inches, you can adjust that pattern when you cut it up. Um, or you can hem it up after you're done. Um, so that's um, this pattern. The only other thing that you kind of get on the back of this is a back view of the garment. Um, on the front, they only show you the front of, um, but this shows you what it looks like on the back. Um, some patterns do that, some patterns don't. Um, it's kind of a cool extra little added feature of this one. Um, and then if we're looking at uh, this pattern, uh, this one's from Butterix. So it gives you uh, most of the same information 
um, sometimes just in a little bit of a different style. Um, for this one, we've actually used this pattern three different times, um, all from sizes small all the way up to large, um, which is good to remember, instead of cutting out your pattern, you might wanna trace it. Um, that way you don't uh, discard the other sizes and you can uh, use it again at, uh, on a different person at a different size. Um, but let's say for this example, we are going to uh, make shirt D, which is the, the most kind of frilly shirt there is here. So we'll need the most yardage. Um, but the same information here, D, um, C, A, and B, um, all the different styles, you'll get the patterns for all of that inside this envelope. Um, maker, and then this is the pattern number on this one. And then the size is for this one, it's up here. Um, so then we know, okay, we're gonna make shirt D. We go to our little flap and we'll say we're medium still just for making it all easy. So we go to our flap and we decide our measurements, our bust, our waist, and our hip measurement line up with medium, right? So then we go down here. Uh, the cool thing about this pattern is they did um, label a difficulty level for you. Um, so you know if you're a beginner um, or, uh, or more advanced, you'll know that you can probably do this pattern because um, it says it's easy. So um, that's always good. It's nice to know that um, if you're just starting out, you know, if you're gonna really run into trouble with this pattern or if it's something you should be able to do. Uh, but then the other thing here on this pattern because of the style of uh, shirt it is, it gives you a, a notion section. So that means all the extra things that you're gonna have to buy on the shirt. So if it needs buttons, if it needs cording, um, for, for the laces in the front, if it needs, um, you know, eyelets or anything like that, that'll tell you that there. So while you're at the store, you can take your pattern envelope and you can buy all the things you need while you're at the store. So for this one, it tells you you need two 5 8 inch buttons, 10 eyelets, and two yards of cording. So those are all things that you can pick up. Once you've picked out your fabric, you can match your buttons and your cording and all of that to your fabric. And then it gives you the same suggestions of fabric. You want a lightweight or medium weight linen or cotton for this. Um, obviously you could make it out of whatever you want, but um, for this same look, that's their suggestion. Um, and then here it breaks it down all the same. So 45 inches or 60 inches tells you, let's see, we're on shirt D, so we're all the way down here. It tells me I need either four and a quarter yards or two and a quarter yards of fabric. This also wants you to pick up some interfacing at five eighths yards. So this, uh, this pattern is pretty simple, um, but it does give you down here at the bottom, the front and back views of each. So that's always nice to know. But that's basically how you read this envelope here and make sure that you're getting all the right information in the right sizes and all the right um, notions and fabrics there. So I hope this was helpful for you guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.